It's here. Hello? Have you checked the children? children, children, children. They're all pots, all of them. Whatever you do, don't fall asleep. I'm afraid! Don't be afraid! No. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Here's Gingy. Pain has a face. Allow me to show it to you. Think that when you die, you go to heaven. You come to us. Hi, I'm Chucky. Wanna play? I think it's just trouble. Julie, this guy, if he can't take a joke, he stinks. There's no more room in hell. The dead will walk here. Go reading! Flesh Wound Horror Freaks, and welcome to a brand new episode of Flesh Wound Horror. I am Daniel Shine, joined as always by Todd Loya, Pugs Dread, and Kruger. Gentlemen, how goes your evenings? Namaste. All goes well. Goes well. well, yeah. <laughs> could be better. <laughs> right? Cool. Yeah, definitely. I know. I, I could tell Dan was, could be better. Dan, Dan was was great. If you heard anything during the intro, that was Dan yawning. So that's always the start of a great. <laughs> I wasn't yawning. I wasn't yawning. You he totally Phantom was. Yawn. Yeah. Phantom yawn, Todd. Dan, you Thank know you. I can see you when they can't write. So I yawn. saw. I I watch you yawn as I heard my you, heard you yawn. So you're like watching me through my cam now. I got to put like <laughs> tape over it. No, I yeah, I see everyone in, in the box. So, like, yes, if you're not on the screen and we're recording, I can see you. All right, Missy. See, like Randall. right now, watch. How many fingers, Dan? Throw some fingers up. <laughs> one. I, I, you guys guess which one, right? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for like letting don't me know go. you're a creep. I, I, well, yeah. I didn't want to tell you all the other times you're you're having fun on my so. That's messed up. Well, stop messed yawning up. in the intro. All right. Well, I sorry. I yawned. A man's tired and gets shit See, on. All, all mentioning all, of yawns is gonna make me yawn. I oh, swear you know, to all God. Dan had to say was so easy. All he had really? to say was that's all he had to say was that's because I'm tired of your shit. All he had to say. All but right. That's why I said Dan needs a ghostwriter for talking shit. Ugh. God damn it. All right. Well, we are here tonight to celebrate the life and legacy of an iconic actor uh you can't really pit him in any one genre because he's done everything i mean john saxon of course who just passed away uh i mean where do you start really because he is somebody obviously in the horror community nightmare on elm street black christmas yeah. you know certainly had his horror legacy but i mean enter the dragon all yeah. of his early tv yeah. work i mean john saxon was the man uh and uh, uh, sorely missed. Uh, Kruger, you actually have a uh, personal story uh, with uh, yeah. John Saxon, though. Well, yeah, um, yes, my grandmother actually uh, knew him back in like around like 1960s, uh, around 1960s or 70s. Uh, he was dating one of her sister's friends, and she used to talk to him all the time while he was doing, I believe, the show Gunsmoke. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's why I could always get away with watching Nightmare on Elm Street with her because <laughs> she, she would always, you know, she, she would just be like, yeah, that's my friend. And, uh, yeah, man, I, I actually just broke the news to her today about it, and oh, she was pretty sad. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah and, and it's too bad that he died in pneumonia, too. It's awful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, uh... I think the last time I saw him was at Fangoria Weekend of Horrors News promoting Trap Dashes, which was a horror anthology he had uh, worked on later in his career. Uh, always nice, though. Like, like always somebody like you could talk to about the most obscure movie that he made. And he'd have a story about it for you, like Hellmaster, you know, something like that. Shit. 
he did. Yeah, yeah he I was thinking about watching parent. Hellmaster. Yeah, he he did. I mean, even when he's he kind of went. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, <laughs> but but you know what? He wasn't ashamed of even like some of the B movie stuff he did. I mean, the guy had such a career. I mean, Evil Eye and. Uh, but I, I guess a good place to start is like what. Well, uh, real quick, I just 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 randomly mm-hmm. fact. I was looking up his first credit is actually in 1954 in the Judy Garland version of A Star Is Born. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Right. Holy shit. He's been around. <laughs> long career. Yeah. Long, long, long career. Uh, do, do you guys like? Is there a, a, a film where you first sort of took note of him? Because, again, it's multiple possibilities with John Saxon. I mean. For me, it's pretty basic. Yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> yeah. yeah, me too, man. Yeah, you know, Nightmare, you know, and then. Well, I, what sequels was he in? He was in three, and then he three was in Night- New Nightmare. Nightmare. Yeah. 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 So every, every time I saw him on screen, I'm like, hey, that's Nancy's yeah. dad. <laughs> right. I loved, his, I loved his part in three. Like he played a yeah. very intricate part in uh, Dream Warrior, or yeah, Dream Warriors, and uh, when they fought like the stop motion Freddy skeleton. Yeah, that, you know that's how he fucking died. Yeah, like I love that scene. Yeah, yeah. I, I love I love the moment in New Nightmare when they're on the porch and they're having the exchange, and like once she just fully accepts it and calls her him daddy. I just, that moment, I just love mm. when it, it turns with those two. <laughs> New Nightmare is so underrated, man. It's I such agree. an underrated sequel. I think, the, I think Dan's the anti-New Nightmare one. No, I'm not. I like it better than Scream, for sure. Oh, okay. I, it's not, like, my favorite of the Elm Street movies, but, you know, it's I don't true. hate that one. To quote Dan, it should be. <laughs> I I think my first actually, and I think it might predate Elm Street was uh, Enter the Dragon. Uh, I saw yeah, that when I was. No, I know the movie pre. I mean, you know. Oh, okay. Discovered him, um, but that one I saw when I was very very young. And well, I think <laughs> doesn't that kind of defeat what the question was when you first recognize and knew him. Like I yeah. saw Enter the Dragon before, but I wouldn't consider that the, the moment I was like, oh shit, yeah. that's Saxton. So that's yeah. why I, it's like the first time you see him, it's like, okay, I, I mean. Mm-hmm. I, I think I took note of him in that one because uh, that is just such a great movie. I mean, even if you're not like a martial arts person, Enter the Dragon mm-hmm. is just kind of an essential film, in my opinion. Um, but no, uh, <laughs> yeah. That's not yeah. like it's cool. death warrant or something. Oh, shut oh, up. No. Don't, don't even start. <laughs> don't even start. you got to turn this into a stomping on the greatest action star of all time, God. But uh, anyways, it would have been better with Jean-Claude Van Damme over Bruce Lee. But... Wow. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> we just didn't get that remake. Uh, but Do you anyways. think Predator would be better with Jean-Claude Van Damme in it, too? He was too short, so that was always weird that he played the predator. But uh, wow. got you're fired playing it up. I think that. he's. I think his real answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> but he say. wanted why, him in the Arnold why, role. Why, I thought you know, <laughs> in the Schwar- in the Schwarzenegger role. Yes, I would love to see him hit the roundhouse on the predators. That would be pretty cool. That would be pretty. Cool. It would be, but but I thought I thought Kruger was to say John Saxon is the predator. <laughs> <laughs> he could make it work, older I'm... dude hunting the predators. Hey, I could have seen Saxon pulling it off, dude. Maybe dude, predator yeah, yeah, I could have seen him in pre- Predator. No, like Predator Two instead of Danny Glover, bro. Yeah, but a cop. There he Come on, <laughs> that shit would be great. <laughs> Saving Heather Langenkamp again, I, playing his daughter. I, I think that's what sold me so much on Nightmare Beach was that he was playing a cop in it too. Like yeah. I love that. There was another one which I know we recently reviewed, Blood Beach. He also plays a cop. Yeah, but that's another <laughs> one. He's the highlight of the movie itself. Not yeah. so much, but and, cool. and he's a and he's like a, a bad cop in that one. Yeah. So yeah, he he could play Danny's anything though. Okay. <laughs> I mean, he looks like a cop. I mean, it makes sense yeah. when I see him. 
<laughs> I mean, and then another one he played the cop. Well, you know, we have to bring up Black Christmas. Oh, yeah, um, man. You can make a case that, I mean, it's hard to really pick it, but you can make a case that Black Christmas is the best movie he ever was in. I mean, that it's hard, but that is a oh, no, 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 smoking dick. Yeah, right. yeah, over Nightmare? I don't know what the fuck you're on, bro. I Look wouldn't at the hat put it up. I wouldn't put it above Elm Street, but I'm just saying it's close. But you just so said <laughs> you put it above like, Elm Street. I said you could make an argument. Is all Are you saying. making the argument? Okay. No. He got, he, okay. He's a politician. He found his loophole. <laughs> right. <laughs> I found my loophole. But yeah, man. But Black Christmas. I mean, for the longest time until about maybe. A decade ago, maybe a little longer, but roughly a decade ago, that movie never got the credit that it really deserved. Is you know, kind of being, you know, I think not the Dan, first I know <laughs> Dan likes to like shorten time. It's been like probably 20, 20 years since that movie really. I don't think he recognizes how old he is because I, I he doesn't because it's been like two thousand. Yeah. It's like twenty twenty. Oh, man, I to be fair, like I hadn't watched Black Christmas uh, ever. Until maybe about five years ago, it's a lot that happened. Yeah, there, there's a lot that happened, I, and it's it's something that like, when I was a, a younger, th that's one I'd bring up, and it felt like nobody had really seen it. Yeah, it, it wasn't until like the, the early 2000s. But I'm going to ask Dan a question. This is off topic. It's not. Could John Saxton have saved the re remake? If he were <laughs> if he were slapping around some of the annoying characters in that, he could have. I think. Uh, he could. <laughs> yeah, he put his skin pad I mean, on and goes in the character from Into the Dragon. <laughs> That's all yeah, he I don't know why you I don't know why you guys did that to yourselves. Like, I won't watch that fucking movie. <laughs> no, it's bad. I won't. Like, I, 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 even just fucking, even just the thought of like what entails in that shit like i don't it's even, worse any part of it because <laughs> <laughs> I, I again like i'm gonna watch everything i can but like i knew it was, it was gonna be that good i didn't expect it to be that big of a pile of shit <laughs> like <Yeah>. this <laughs> drastic size <laughs> it, <laughs> it, it felt like uh i mean i really think it was like an apology flick from jason bloom and uh, I, I, I think I, like I am so upset about this stuff now. Well, I got because Dan's gonna go on his pro his woman it. his woman hating show. No, again. I'm not. I'm not. I, that was a man hating movie. I, I think there was like a board. She threw a dart at it, and it's like, okay, you can make your man hating movie with Black Christmas it, again. It, but I'm just <sighs> I, I digress. But John Saxon, uh, okay, he well, made I want to. Yeah, 1980, he had Beyond Evil, um, Cannibal Apocalypse, Blood Cannibal. Beach, um, Battle Beyond the Stars, and then uh, a more mainstream of Running Scared with uh, Gregory Hines, where he also played a cop. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is a theme, uh, but he also played uh, the sort of Darth Vader-esque villain in Battle Beyond the Stars, which is, uh, I want to say... I, I, and I don't think he ever made anything more expensive. That was the most expensive Roger Corman movie ever. Yeah. Uh, at that point, that was pretty elaborate. And I misspoke. It wasn't the Gregory Hines one. It was a different one. I, I don't. I don't think I've actually seen this one from 1980. Judge Reinhold. Ken, yeah, and Ken Wall. Yeah, Code Red put the Blu-ray out in that one. Maybe they I have, have them. Okay, you know what? I'll, I'll hook you up. I have it. No, nah, I, I have it. I do. Oh, okay. I still yeah, need I to see him. Can I oh, go ahead, Pugs. No, go for it, dude. Uh, I was just gonna say I still need to see Cannibal uh, Apocalypse. I've never seen it. And I'm a big I, fan of like Italian cannibal movies. So, well, that's the first thing you're gonna need to do. Is it's not an Italian can. It's not really. Oh really? <laughs> it's more that's about how like I went in and I was a little disappointed. It's a good movie though. <laughs> you're gonna have a good time. I it's, love it. it yeah. It's more it's more about like. Uh, Soldiers coming back from Vietnam. Think Death Dream with less zombies. Okay. If you've seen <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's not what you think it is, but I think it's a very underrated movie. I think it's one of his best. Uh, wow. Uh, and Giovanni Lombardo Radice was really good in that one. 
put them to, which didn't help that people I think were expecting Cannibal Fair Ox, but you know, it's got some nastiness. And then 82, my favorite, see, I don't know if it's my favorite Argento film because John Saxon's in it or if, yeah, I don't know, but that's Tenebrae has always been my favorite. Yeah. My I've favorite. never seen it. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll have to rectify that one immediately. Yeah, um, I need to, I need to dive into more Argento stuff. I've, that yeah that's my really favorite and it's got it's like i said it's got john saxon that's probably my second favorite role i mean nancy's dad's always up there it's one of his too actually i, I can remember him putting that one over a lot in different panels that that he did and Fe- he was a really early guest for fangoria weekend of ours i mean he was like one of the among the first like horror celebrities that i met like back in the 90s even um and yeah i mean just such a legacy i mean we could do like 20 shows just on covering his career uh if we were reviewing his movies um and I, even a lot of the b stuff tends to be fun like you said nightmare yeah. beach uh reviewing that again not that long ago uh really fun fun ass movie blood beach i think i like a little more yeah, than you so- but still fun I also remember he was yeah, on Nightmare a bunch. Beach. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to say Nightmare Beach surprised the hell out of me. Uh, you know, I yeah. watched it because you guys reviewed it, and it really was fucking a good ass slasher. Yeah. yeah, big fan of that one. I was going to say I remember him always popping up. I know he did multiple times on um, Fan- Fantasy Island. He was always on that one as different yeah. characters. He was on the A team. Yes, that he did the A team. <laughs> I know I seen him in a Magnum PI. Um, I I'm totally sure. forgot he was in freaking Beverly Hills Cop uh, three. Is it three? I, we're jumping a few years ahead. Yeah, <laughs> it's three. I, I I need to revisit that movie because I I just remember a theme park. All I remember is I still have the twelve inch for the Easy E single from the movie, which I remember watching the movie and being annoyed they played the clean version in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> It was he an also, R-rated movie. Why would they play the clean one? <laughs> he also, uh, I, I know it's hard to say, like, what was the first Jallo, because we talk about Slasher with Black Christmas, uh, you know, being kind of like a, the early Slasher. Uh, but Evil Eye, Mario Baba, kind of one that yeah. a lot of people consider um, one of what's, the OG Jallos. Yeah, most people consider that the first Jallo. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the alternate name? Uh, oh, I always forget. I know because you said the least common one, so I'm trying to have everyone. Uh, Although it's Evil Eye on the Blu-ray, which is what's uh, uh, kind of confusing. Shit. I have no idea what the other. I know. Is. I'm trying uh, to look it up, and it's in Italian, so it's not going to help me. Um, what year was it, Dan? I want to say '63, but I don't have the. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, I go the... grab the Blu-ray, but I have my. Headphones. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just trying to look it up real quick. Hey, he was in a couple of night galleries. Oh, okay. Yeah. Does he have any Twilight Zone under his belt? I've never, you know, checked that one. That's interesting. I would think he'd have to, but uh... Bonanza. Oh, Hell that's yeah, right. Bonanza. The <laughs> you Bonanza guy, yeah. Pugs? I do like Bonanza. Oh, okay. I'm not like a super die hard or anything, but yeah, man's is fun. Guns, smoke, is, guns now smoke. it's bothering me. <laughs> the evil I eye thing. Hold on. Oh, I know. oh, he was in the Masters of Horror episode too. Yeah, yeah. the um, so uh, which one? Who directed that one? Uh, was it Mick Garris? I think Mick Garris did his episode. <laughs> We're trying to figure out the evil eye thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One problem at a time. This is very unprofessional. <laughs> He's in CSI. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, he. What the fuck is this? I know his health was a little bit uh, dicey towards the end. Uh, the last time I saw him, I noticed like he didn't hear very well. The girl but... who knew too much. There I'm, you go. I'm. I There's... don't know enough. <laughs> yeah, there's so many alternate times. Sometimes it's like well, it's the Blu-ray, and that's how I think of it. But 
Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that, that one, another that one, if you haven't seen the best of, uh, check it out. And then uh, Blood Salvage is another one. Not the greatest film, but it's a weird one. It's on it should be on Amazon Prime. Um yeah. it's got Evander Holyfield. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much a chainsaw ripoff, but it's an entertaining one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he um and he really he didn't ever really like fully retire. You can tell that he was slowing down a little bit, but never fully retired. What is that? <laughs> yeah, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to isolate it. Yeah, I was trying to figure it out myself and make sure it wasn't me. <laughs> All right. I think it's coming from you, Kruger, because I muted everyone. Is, is your volume up? I can. It's weird because I can hear the head. I can hear it. But you're on your headphones. Yeah, that's weird. Let me see if I can. Volume down. Is that, is that any better? Okay, go ahead and just. No. You know what? Exit, exit, and come back in with the same mic. That helps sometimes. Okay. We'll each test it. But. Um... Are you going to edit this part out, Todd? No. Okay. <laughs> we're, go, we're going live to take Okay, today. we're doing it live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never know if I'm just hearing it or if it's, yeah, but so we apologize for the technical difficulties. No. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, Saxon, there's a, there's a lot of places you can start with him. Um, he's, I mean, you can start with Elm Street. You can start with Black Christmas. Uh, if you want to go way back, uh, you know, you can start with Gunsmoke, Bonanza. He did a lot of Western stuff. That's really, like, kind of, I think, what he was really known for. Uh, I remember my mom even talking to him about all those shows uh, at Weekend of Horrors. And, um, yeah, man, I, I mean, not not unexpected. I mean, he was elderly, led a full life, but um, uh, he will be missed. He will definitely be missed. I still... He was one that I I know it's unlikely at this point, but I always thought it would be cool if he'd pop up in another uh, Elm Street movie, even, you know, not necessarily the same role, but uh, it'd be kind of cool to have seen him come back. Uh, but he does have, um, it, I, I don't know if he's wrapped it or not, but he has at least one other movie uh, that he did that hasn't come out yet uh, after the thunderstorm. Uh, hopefully he wrapped that and we'll get uh, something decent with him one last time. Uh, but uh, as far as later in his career, uh, you mentioned Masters of Horror. Pelts is a really good episode. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, in my opinion, when Meatloaf comes out with like the, fu the fucking like skin hanging off Dude, of him. Pelts is <laughs> awesome, but I think all of our favorites should be Jennifer. Just throwing it out there. Yeah, Jen. <laughs> that, yeah. Jen is a good one. Kruger, have you seen these? No, I haven't. No. Um, it's fun. Uh, have, it's you watched, homework. have you watched uh, Masters of Horror? Or no? None of them. No, I need to. Yeah, they're good. They're good little hour. It's if you're over in, uh, in the dark, definitely go with that one. Gotcha. Um, Jennifer, yeah, though. fuck yeah, <laughs> Jennifer's, yeah, Jennifer's fucked up. Masters of Horror, I keep saying I'd like to see it come back, but I don't know that you could now because if you go back and watch like some of those episodes, I mean, Imprint, Jesus, I mean, that got banned back then. I don't know how Shutter uh, hasn't picked it up or like a form of it. Maybe McGarris isn't not focusing on it now. Uh, well, right now they're all, f all f well, if you want to watch them, they're all free on Voodoo. Yeah, yeah, you can get uh, you can. I mean, two seasons. No, like, I think Fear itself is actually pretty good too. The first yeah. episode was. I I finally picked it up because I never actually watched it. So I was like, why do I want to watch a network TV version of Masters of Horror? I get that, but it was still because pretty Hannibal. Good. But yeah. <laughs> this is free Hannibal. Though. 
yeah. Um, but oh, man, I, I I don't know. I'm trying to decide myself what I'm going to binge uh, of his. Um, I think I will go back and watch Trap Dashes again. I always like that. Um, and uh, we also we didn't mention this. He also had a role in From Dusk Till Dawn. Yes, he did. Oh, yeah. He was an agent, right? Yeah. Um, Beverly Hills Cop 3. Uh, I mean, again, he hit every genre. He really did. And um, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, Monsters, uh, you mentioned. I can't place the episode that he did of Monsters. Um I don't know if you uh, if you remember which one it was because I, I don't. Remember. I can't. I have to go. I have to go back and check it out because uh, I I love monsters. I when they put that box set out, I was like over the moon. Uh, we just need Freddy's Dead now. Um, there Freddy's, Freddy's nightmares. Not Freddy's nightmares. I'm sorry. We don't need Freddy's Dead. Nobody needs Freddy's Dead. Uh, I will argue this like forever. <laughs> Freddy's Dead is better than Nightmare on Street. Five is garbage. Yeah, I, I agree. Because <laughs> at least five, or at least Freddy's Dead has some fun to it. Five's just fucking baby bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just still have a tough time with Freddy's. If you're in the right goofy mood, but he kills somebody with a toothpick. I mean, you know. Hey, if Razor Ramon did it, you'd be all about it. <laughs> <laughs> or a Q-tip, not a toothpick. He kills somebody with a Q-tip. Well, you that'll, know, if that'll you, do some damage in your ear, man. I know, you know, but what serial killer has ever actually killed? I mean, I'm sure maybe there is. I'll look that up if anybody's been killed with a Q-tip. I, I kind of doubt it. Try it. See how deep you can get it in your ear. That's that's messed up. Give you a headache, dude. Screw up your ears. Uh, my ear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, man. Uh, I don't know which ones I'm going to go back to. My mom's a werewolf. Is werewolf. Yeah. Um. What are you gonna, Todd? What are you gonna check out? It's so easily spooked. It's funny. Um, I definitely. I, I feel like actually the two I'm kind of feeling right now are New Nightmare and of course Tenebrae. Okay. I think I'm gonna go Enter the Dragon. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's been a long time. What about you, Kruger? <laughs> Obviously, Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> the original three are both. Of- the original. Yeah, that's a good one. All of his entries are great, so you can't go wrong. My only issue with re- my only issue with revisiting New Nightmare though is I'm gonna feel like I gotta rewatch all of them. You know what I mean? Like I just it's hard for me to jump in. I normally get that, but that is like literally the one that has zero continuity. I know, I know, and maybe I maybe I'll just say screw it, but then I'm just like I don't know. I, I don't know. I, it's hard for me to go and like just watch like I don't know Friday Five. I'm gonna want to. Oh, I do that every all. fucking Friday the Thirteenth. <laughs> Friday <laughs> Five. <laughs> yeah, but you don't. You don't like. You feel the urge to revisit the whole series. I have a hard that, time with that. I usually does that work with, that. You do that with uh, Freddy versus Jason too. If like if you rewatch it, you just you have to watch everything else. Yeah, I'm oh, weird that way. Like, I want to revisit the whole. That's fine. I know. I know. I, do that a lot too, but I can get away with like something like those I've seen like a thousand times. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I'm weird. I don't know. I can maybe. Do it. Whoa, whoa! We would never have guessed that, Dan. I'm not gonna argue though. <laughs> uh, but, but. Man, it's sad to see him go. It really is. Uh, but I, I think he's a guy that a hundred years from now people will still be enjoying his work. There's just so much of it, uh, you know. Any popular TV series uh, from his time, uh, 
the, the guy was in it. I mean, like you said, Fantasy Island, Magnum P.I. Uh, I mean, he did it all. Uh, he was a legit movie star. And, uh, yeah, he will be missed. Rest in peace. Thank you, Mr. Saxon. Definitely R.I.P. R.I.P. Yeah. Not many legends left now. It's sad. Oh, God. Don't don't jinx it. <laughs> what shirt are you wearing today, Dan? What? Come on, Star Trek. <laughs> what shirt are you wearing today? Fright Night. All right. There goes... Uh... Fuck. Rowdy Jerry Dandridge. On. No. Don't put the... Then you're going to look like an ass. Well. Susan Sarandon, not Chris. Just, yeah. You're going to take Damn. Some, yeah. Why Why are you hating on Susan? Yeah. I like Susan Sarandon, but Chris, Sar- Chris Sarandon made Fright Night. God damn it. If I, if yeah, I'm gonna, he's not making them anymore. I've got a serial killer that's, you know, telling me I got to pick one. Sorry, Susan. There you go. I disagree. Them on the Louise is a masterpiece. Up yours. Mr. Saxon, we love you. Yes. <laughs> we love you, John. All right, <laughs> Is this Dan's version of rapping? Because I, I, I've been trying to hint at it. <laughs> I, I literally sent him a message with final thoughts. Final thoughts. Well, I will do some plugs. FleshWoundFeatures.com. Check out the uh, Flesh Wound Dan eBay and everybody and Todd's eBay as well is on there. Uh, be sure to uh, stalk us on Twitter and Instagram. On uh, Facebook, be sure to join the Horror Cartel flesh wound radio group and be sure to like the flesh wound features facebook page as well as uh here on youtube we're still new so like share and subscribe we appreciate it good night guys rest in peace